Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we are back to working on the Lucas Model 31 horizontal boring mill restoration that we've been uh, involved in now for quite some time. And uh, still waiting on the Turkite to come in to finish up these tables. The good news is, is that it has shipped. Uh, it's coming all the way from California, so it'll probably be sometime next week before it gets here. Uh, but when that gets here, we'll get back to getting the saddle and stuff. But in the meantime, got another little quick project. I say quick, uh, it shouldn't be too terrible to do to this piece here, uh, which is the same part that we were working on previously, where we fixed, made a new shaft here uh, to drive the little gear here that, that uh, basically moves it up and down. Uh, this is the base for the tailstock for this uh, horizontal boring mill. So this will lay down on the ways and there's another casting that comes up off of it. And uh, you can take a long boring bar from the head and run it all the way to this tailstock. It'll support that. And uh, this uh, tailstock raises and lowers with that head. It's all timed and synced up together. Uh, in this, there is a bronze bushing down here that holds a bevel gear. This actually is what powers the raising and lowering of the tailstock uh, in sync with the headstock. Uh, and um, it's pretty worn, this, uh, this bronze bushing is. Now it's the time to replace it, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let me zoom in and show you what we got and come up with a game plan and get to work, see if we can get this thing fixed up. So as you can see, there is uh, this piece here, there's a bronze bushing in here. And what happens is, is this uh, bevel gear fits into there. Uh, it has got a hole in there with a key. There is a shaft that comes all the way the length of this. This slides up and down on that shaft and in that key. And uh, that shaft, whenever we raise and lower the head, it turns and as it turns, it's turning this bevel gear. Uh, the bevel gear has a mating piece on the other side of it that goes up and down, basically uh, transferring the power 90 degrees. And that's what uh, turns a lead screw in the tailstock that raises and lowers the head. Um, the problem I've got here is, is that there's a good bit of play in there. Uh, it's just worn over the years. Uh, you got steel on, on brass or bronze there, which is a good bearing combination, uh, but it has worn considerably over the years. Probably not a huge issue, but as long as we got this thing apart, uh, I figured now is the time to go ahead and, and just uh, replace it and uh, put a new bushing in there that has a little bit tighter fit. So here's the game plan. First, we got to get this bushing out. Um, and what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of uh, scrap metal here. This is just something I picked up off the scrap pile. It's a little bit larger than that hole, but... We're gonna turn uh, about half of this so that it drops down inside this bronze bushing. And then we'll have a little step on there and the outside diameter of this will be turned down a little bit smaller again than this diameter so it'll just slip through. And then that will drop in there and then I can drop a piece of uh, metal down through this hole and press that out. Now, I don't know if I'm going to just, I'm going to probably start by just seeing if I can knock it out with a hammer. If I have to, we'll take this over to either the arbor press or the hydraulic press, depending on how stubborn it is. Uh, but we'll press out this bushing and uh, then make a new bronze bushing that will press back in there. But the inside diameter um, being a little bit tighter and fitting this a little bit better so we don't have all that wobble in it. So that's the game plan. That's the project for today. First thing we need to do is get this bronze bushing out. Then we'll make a new one and uh, reinstall it. So I'm going to head over to the lathe and we're going to work on this little uh, adapter here that will fit in there and uh, hopefully press that right out. All right, we're set up over here in the lathe. And uh, what I want to do is just turn down a little step on here. The height really is totally irrelevant, doesn't really matter. The diameter needs to be around 2.1 inches. Again, it's not a critical measurement. It just needs to drop down in that hole and have a little wiggle room to uh, where it's not too tight. So we're gonna go ahead and face the front of this and just turn the little shoulder on there to the small diameter. Then we'll flip it around and turn the large diameter. So we'll uh, start by facing it. That'll 
clean it up right there. Go here and touch off. Make about a hundred thousandths cut. That'll be plenty. I'm going to get a measurement on that diameter and plug it in my digital readout. So we can just dial right to where we need to go. So we are at 2.942. And I'm going to about 2.1. So um, yeah, about nine more times or eight more times. I'll just do a hundred thousandths per pass. And we'll take her down. I'll bring you back here when we get down close to the bottom side. We've got about 40 thousandths to take off of there. I'm just going to dial it in on the digital readout. This is not a critical measurement. So uh, this should be taking us down to about 2.1 inches. We'll go ahead and turn back to that uh, shoulder and then face back on that. Make sure we got got... Uh, Nice square shoulder there. And that is good. Break that corner on the bottom. Go ahead and put a nice chamfer here and break this corner. Should be plenty. And we'll flip the part around and turn the uh, outside diameter. Go ahead and face this, get a nice square side to press on. And quite clean up, so we'll do one more pass. That should get it. Touch off here. All right, we're going to dial in 2.425 here. This will be our last pass. This just needs to be a little bit smaller diameter than the. Uh, um, bushing that we're pressing out so that we'll have a shoulder there to press it through but it'll clear the hole without any interference and that smaller diameter of course will help us center it up on the hole so this should be it let's uh, go ahead and again break that corner put a nice chamfer on there I'm gonna flip it around and clean up that edge because we got all kinds of a mess in there. Got a little run out in it, but it's not gonna matter. I just wanna just wanna break that shoulder. I wanna leave most of it on there because that is gonna be what we the shoulder that we press on, and that should be done. Let's go try it out for size. Let's try it out. So what we want to do is just drop that right in there. That fits the inside hole just fine. I can see a little bit of brass all the way around, so that's going to clear the hole. We won't get any, or any interference. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find me a piece of metal to drop down through this hole and see if I can just tap that out with a hammer. If not, we'll uh, press it out. But uh, this casting's heavy, and I really don't want to have to move it unless I just have to move it. So uh, I'm gonna try to do the lazy man's way first and just drive it out with a hammer. I got me a piece of shaft in here to drop down in there. Oh yeah, that's moving. 
It's going to come right out. There it goes. There's our bushing. Worked perfect. Now we just need to make a new one of these. So there's the bushing that we pulled out. And um, I've got a piece of brass. I just happen to have the perfect size piece of bronze here to make that out of that was left over from another project. We saved it. And I, I mean, it's just almost perfect for the job. But before I do it, you know, we, we know that we got a good bit of a uh, play on this. I went to measuring this gear trying to get a figure out what the diameter is and the gear is pretty worn as well. It's not very uh, uniform in diameter. So I think the first thing I want to do is true this up over on the lathe. Since we're going to make a new bushing, it's going to be a little bit undersized, but we can make the bushing to, to match whatever diameter that ends up to be. Now to turn this, uh, I need for it to be running true to that inside bore. There was a key that was pinned in here, just had two pins in it. I punched those out. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this on a um, adjustable uh, expanding mandrel. Uh, these basically, you got a little, the center part is kind of spring loaded and as it goes down this taper, it gets tighter and tighter. And uh, we're just gonna basically just drop our gear over that tighten that in place and we can turn the shaft between centers and it should come out fine. So I'm just going to kind of tighten that in there real good and tight. Um, just using a brass punch here where I'm not damaging anything. We'll um, hammer it on there good. And that is now on that center. So I'm gonna go set that up in the lathe. And like I said, we're just gonna turn that down until it is all trued up, same diameter. And then we will measure that and match our bore uh, to fit that. All right. All right, we can kind of take a look at our setup here now. We've got our gear here mounted on the expanding mandrel. So it is between centers. I have a dead center chucked up over here in the uh, three jaw chuck and I did come in here and just true it up on the lathe. I didn't show that step. Uh, so basically this is just between these two centers. Uh, we got a dead center here and a live center here. The live center will spin. This one's going to spin with the chuck. This one's going to spin in a bearing. Now to drive this we have a drive dog stuck on there. So that's going to actually hit the chuck here and when the chuck turns it will turn the mandrel, which will in turn uh, turn the gear. So my goal right now is, is I want to come in here and I just want to clean this up. I don't want to take off any more than I just absolutely have to. So we're just going to touch off and, you know, I'm just going to fuzz it and uh, see how much we have to take off of this to get it to clean up from one side to the other. Um, not taking much off at all. I'll probably have to take another pass. You can see it's already skipping in here. That's where that is not worn evenly. It's worn more in some places than others. But we're just going to take a couple of skim passes here to get it cleaned up and running true. And uh, then we can bore the piece of bronze to match whatever this diameter is. This is not a critical measurement. We're not even touching it all now as we get down to the bottom. So I'm going to come back out. And we're just going to take about 10 thou and uh, run down through there and see if that'll clean it up. If not, we'll take another pass. Kind of not cutting all the way around a while ago, but I think we're going to make it. And I'm going to go up to that shoulder. And I'm also going to come out and just lightly face that so we have a nice square shoulder in there. And... Uh, I think we're good here. I'm just going to look at it. Looks fine. Looks very good. I will uh, go ahead and just uh, chamfer that bottom corner down there. It probably doesn't need it, but it sure won't hurt to have it. So, I just 
that ever so slightly. There we go. That's pretty rounded up here. Got some uh, dings on it, but won't hurt anything. I like it. All right, we will get a good measurement on that. We'll know what we'll need to bore this to. That gear is nice and cleaned up. Knock this back off again using a brass uh, punch here where we won't damage anything. The brass is softer than the uh, metal we're going against. There we go. The gear is off. There we go. We'll put that back up, have it ready for next time. And our gear is ready to go. I will uh, get a good measurement on this. It's like it's about two inches. Oh, let's see, it'd be 75, 80, two and a half, roughly. Probably let's measure the tenths. 0.4. So, um, write this down. It's going to be 2.0824. So, next step is we're going to take this piece of uh, bearing bronze, we'll set it up over the lathe, and we're going to bore this out. Um, Let's see, I'm going to make it about, we're just going to go to 2.085. That'll give me about two and a half thousandths of clearance. And uh, that should be plenty, and we can do a test fit. And if we need to make a little bit more, we can easily do that. I've got my piece of bronze uh, chucked up here in the lathe. We're going to start by uh, facing this front. We just have a saw cut, so we have a nice uh, machined edge there. All right. All right, let's try this one out. I always like to go with as large of a bar as I can. And that one clears it just fine, just gives it some more rigidity. Um, I do want to shorten this up, though. There's no reason for it to stick out that long. That'll help cut down some of the vibrations. Come in here and touch off on that. And I'm going to take about a hundred thousandths off that inside diameter. Just using a bore mic here, and we came in and measured. I've already actually got it measured. Uh, 1.514 uh, is where we're at, 1.514. And um, that'll get us real close. We're going to 2.085. Take about another hundred thou out of there. All right, we're boring here. According to my digital readout, we're right on two inches. So uh, we're gonna bore this. We'll measure it. And we're going to two inches, 85 thou. So we still got about 85 thou to come out of there. We're getting down close to the final size. So according to that, we're about eight thousandths over two inches. I think what I'm gonna do is let that cool down uh, just to make sure that 
we're getting a good measurement at at uh, room temperature. So we're gonna shut the machine off and just let that cool down for a little bit. All right, guys, we let that cool down for a little while, and I remeasured it, and it did shrink about a thou. Uh, I re-entered the diameter into the digital readout, so we're kind of resetting that uh, now that it's cooled down, and we're going to 2.085, and we've got about 80,000, so a little less than 80,000 to come out of there, so we're just gonna continue along here. And uh, I'm going to do about half of the total, so about 40 thousandths here. And we're just going to sneak up on that last, uh, last measurement. We do have a little wiggle room on this inside bore. Uh, you know, it just needs to be a little bit undersized from... Uh, or a little bit oversized, I guess, actually, from the other piece. And we've, we've got, you know, probably five, ten thousandths of an inch of a tolerance in there. It's not a super critical fit like the next one will be, which will be the uh, press fit that goes on the inside diameter. But uh, anyway, we're just going to sneak up on it. I'm going to measure between each cut. And just make sure that we're going, we're, that the measurement's staying just like the digital readout. So, oops, that's the wrong one. Here we go. So we're about two inch of 36 right now. So we're gonna take another pass. It's just very, very lightly cutting, but uh, that should get us right on our measurement, according to the DRO, which we'll read out. It should be a good fit, and I like that. That's got just a couple of thou clearance in there, and that's going to be perfect. So, um, I'm good with that. So once again, we got our bushing and we got an expanding mandrel here. And what we need to do is expand that one onto this one. These expanding mandrels, I know we looked at them a while ago, but the tapers match and this is kind of spring loaded. So as it goes down, it expands the diameter of that inside part and it just uh, keeps everything running true to the from the inside to the outside. So I'm gonna just tighten that up. And now when we turn the outside, it's gonna be running perfectly true to the inside. So once again, we'll get this set up between centers over on the lathe and we'll turn that outside diameter to what it needs to be for our interference fit. So once again, we're set up over here. We've got the expanding mandrel on here. We got the bushing in place. Uh, we got the drive center. I uh, went ahead again, had to retrieve my, my dead center on this side, got the live center on this side. So everything is uh, turning. Uh, the outside of this is real close to where we want to end up at. I've only got about 40 thousandths of uh, play in there or of extra material. So I'm just going to take a real light pass Try to clean that up, hey, but we're not quite cleaning up. So let me just take a little bit more here. All right, we're about four and a half thousandths larger than our bore. Right where we need to be. Let me uh, break those edges on that. I'm going to put a nice lead in edge on that side. That'll be the side I press in. And just break that edge. And we are 
finished with that bushing. So we got our bushing all done. Nice fit there. And um, it's about, like I said, about four and a half thousandths larger than the um, hole it's going to go in, which is more or less exactly what the other one was. And according to Machinery's Handbook is the the limit for an interference uh, press fit. So uh, next step is to press this thing in. But before I do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the freezer and freeze it probably overnight. We'll probably wait and press this in tomorrow. Um, and what that will do is it's going to actually shrink it up just a little bit, a couple of thousandths, not very much at all. But that little bit of shrink will make a big difference in how easy it is to press this thing in. Um, I may even try to warm the casting up a little bit. Uh, I don't want to get the torch out on it because I've already got it painted, but uh, may see if I can put a little heat in it to kind of warm up the uh, cast iron part and that will expand the hole. And uh, when you do that, it makes it real easy. These things just drop in and when the temperature's normalized, you get a nice perfect press fit. Uh, but we're gonna use that trick. So I'll let that sit in the freezer overnight, get good and cold and uh, should help going in, hopefully. So guys, just take a quick look at what we've done here. I wanted to put some heat on this casting to just kind of expand it. And what I ended up using, I just had a couple of heat lamps here and we've had it sitting on this now for several hours and I got an infrared thermometer, about 122 degrees is what that's measuring. I've also got the bushing that's going in there. It's in the freezer. Uh, and it has, is, it's also, well, it's at about 20 degrees. I think it was 19 degrees. So there's roughly a hundred degree difference in the temperature between the two parts. So the idea is, is, uh, the bushing is frozen. It's going to shrink up, you know, just a small, tiny amount. We've only got about four or four and a half thousandths clearance interference rather between these and so this heat is going to expand it make this hole just a little bit larger so the idea here is is that um, it should go in much easier in fact it may just drop in we'll see I may have to, to hammer on it a little bit but once everything normalizes it's going to be at a four and a half thousandths uh, interference fit so uh, it'll be a really nice tight fit so let me get this uh, stuff out of the way and we'll get the part and see if we can drop it in there. All right, here we go. I got my part up here. And I'm just going to take the same setup we had before. Just a little bit too far there. Let me see if I can knock that back in a little bit. That's perfect. There is an oil clearance hole that goes all the way through this, so I do want to go ahead and drill that back out. You can see in the original bush in there uh, where that went clear through, so uh, no big deal. Got some trash in there. There we go. Let's do a test fit here. There it goes. That's going to fit nicely. So, um, one thing I do need to do still, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is an original. There's they just had cut a little slot in there to let the oil spread out in the bottom of that. I'm gonna let this cool down and I'll get in there with a die grinder and uh, cut that little slot in there, a little oil groove. And uh, I'll do that a little bit later on. But other than that, this job is pretty well finished. Um, happy with how that turned out. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we got it. I think we got it. This bottom piece now is pretty much all rebuilt and Ready to go. We'll uh, 
have that in there, and that's a much nicer fit than what we had before where we had all that slop in it. And of course, we previously fixed the uh, gear over in this uh, setup as well. Well, there we go, guys. Uh, one more step done in the restoration of this Lucas Horizontal Boring Mill. Um, this is all pretty much back in good shape and ready to go back together. So um, that's checked off the list. Like I said, our turkite should come in next week. We can go ahead and get the saddle and stuff ready once I've got that last little bit over there and get that turkite scraped in, uh, which shouldn't take long. It's just, it moves pretty quickly. There's one little alignment test I need to make sure I get aligned up just right with once I get the turkite on there. Uh, once that's done, I think we can start putting this machine back together and uh, have it ready to go back into use. Very exciting time. So uh, hopefully getting toward the, the short rows on getting this project finished up. Guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Really helps feed the algorithms over there on YouTube and uh, help people discover my channel. Um, also, big huge thank you to all the supporters out there who support the site through Patreon, PayPal, and other means. Uh, really could not do everything we do here without your help, and uh, just greatly, greatly appreciated. So big huge thank you to everybody that does that. With that, guys, we're, we're going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.